Beauty Kachua by Jen. Mwah. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to get a natural look with your makeup. First I'm going to start by applying my moisturizer and the one that I'm using is one that I've been using for a few years and it's just this one right here which is Neutrogena's um, Sensitive Skin Oil Free Moisturizer. The, I'm using the sensitive skin one not because I actually have sensitive skin but I just feel that maybe it has a little less nasties than the normal one. Now the reason why I start with a moisturizer on my freshly cleaned face is because you want your face to be nice and smooth when you apply your makeup. You don't want it to look rough because we're going for that really natural um, look. And I'm just going to apply it using um, my fingertips. Just dab it all over my face and apply it in a circular motion all over. Now at this stage I like to add my lip balm. The one that I'm using is this one right here. Um, it's just a Blistex Ultra Lip Balm. It's supposed to protect you from all weather. And right now I'm in winter here in Australia and um, my lips are just have just been getting really dry like crazy. And you don't want dry lips for the natural makeup look because once you put on your lipstick or your lip balm, your lips all um, cracking and whatever is not a good look. So I like to start with my lip balm. Now I'm going to take my foundation, which is this one right here, the Estee Lauder um, Nutritious Foundation. It's my favorite foundation. I find it really um, gives me a really all-natural look. It may not work for everybody because I'm sure everybody has different needs and different levels of coverage for their skin, but for this look, I think that a really light foundation like this one doesn't necessarily have to be this brand. Um, but a really light foundation would work really well. I'm just going to apply it on the back of my hand, just right here. Um, just put a little, little dab. And, and now I'm going to get my Kabuki brush and apply it. So I'll just swirl it like that. And now I'm going to apply it on my face in a circular motion. Um, the reason that I'm using a kabuki brush as opposed to a foundation brush, well, I used to use um, a foundation brush to apply my foundation, and I just found, um, I've just recently discovered that the kabuki brush really gives it a more flawless finish and really makes it look a little bit more kind of airbrushed and more natural looking rather than the foundation brush. For me, I find that it blends a lot better um, with the kabuki brush and just looks so much more natural. Now I'm going to add some concealer on the blemished areas of my face and also under my eyes just to brighten them up and to give me more of that flawless natural look. So just take your concealer and just dab, make a few little dots under your eyes. Just dab it gently because remember your under your eyes is a very sensitive area of your face. If you have any other blemishes that you want to cover, um, also put a little bit there. And then just blend it in. Um, you can either use a con concealer brush or your fingertips, whatever works for you. I'm going to use a concealer brush. Try to get in the inner corner of your eyes um, just to brighten up that area. Just remember to be really gentle with the under eye area of your face when you're blending in the concealer. You don't have to use a brush in the under eye area if you feel like it's too harsh on your face. Now once you're done, take your eyebrow pencil. I'm going to use this one right here. The brand is Astralis. Um, the color is dark brown or is it dark brown? Yeah, dark brown. Um, the reason why I'm using this one, well, I like the idea that it came with a little brow brush so I didn't have to go out and purchase another one. I know that some people like to draw them straight on. For me, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to um, scribble on the back, on the actual bristles of the brow brush, and then I'm going to apply it. 
and just um, I find that this this way of um, of applying the brow pencil on your brows um, looks the most natural well for me anyway um, rather than penciling them in I mean you can but like if you're going to do like little strip feathered strokes um, and draw them on that would work that would work probably almost as well but you will have to blend it in still probably using a brow brush but for me this is the way this is the way that I do it now I'm going to take my Estee Lauder um, duo in platinum all right so now I'm going to apply the white eyeshadow which is this one right here and I'm just going to use a quite a wide eyeshadow brush to apply it. I'm pretty much going to put it in the inner corners of my lids and also um, up on my upper brow bone and pretty much all over but I'll show you. See? <laughs> so pretty much in the inner corner all the way up to your upper brow bone just apply your light shade or white shade as I'm using right here. Um, doesn't have to be really white, something um, just that's light and kind of blends into your skin. You don't want it to be like really powdery white because um, that won't look natural at all. Um, I know that actually, I know that this particular white that I'm using, um, the shade that I'm using looks quite um, white but as you can see it doesn't really apply um, very white it's more of like a highlighting color okay so now I'm going to apply this darker color um, right here as you can see it's kind of like a purpley um, I don't know if it's purpley kind of silvery kind of brownish neutral color anyway I'll just use the brush that it came with it's a little bit smaller than the eyeshadow brush that I was using and it would it works a little bit better when applying it to your crease because it is so small so try to go for something about this size doesn't have to be angled actually um, just apply it to your outer crease just like this do the same on the other side blend it in your outer crease Okay, so now I've finished my eyeshadow and at now at this stage you can kind of add your eyeliner um, on your upper lids if you want to, if you really want to, but for me, if you want this to look more natural, I would go pro I would probably go without the eyeliner because I feel that it will kind of make this look a little bit net less natural than what we're going for. But by all means, if you really would like to, then go ahead. Now at this stage, um, if you're like me and you didn't want to line your eyes, you can actually curl your eyelashes um, to prepare them for mascara or you could just curl them and not bother putting on any mascara to make this look even more natural. But I do actually recommend using a little bit of mascara just because probably a little bit of the eyeshadow that you were using and applying on your eyelids, probably they, it dropped and it will give you that little bit of powderiness on your eyelashes and it will just not make your eyelashes pop and you kind of want them to pop but not too much that it would look not natural. Um, for me I'm not going to curl my lashes because um, I think I've got quite enough curl. Actually a little story about the length and curl of my eyelashes. Um, when I was younger, um, probably a toddler, um, my mom, who's Filipino, was actually quite fascinated by my eyelashes. She put some matchsticks on my eyelashes. I think she put like two or three um, in between my, um, my eyelashes and she was really surprised that they actually stayed there while I was watching TV. I know, kind of child torture, isn't it? But anyway, she was just fascinated by <laughs> the way I was because um, it was so different to her. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to apply my mascara. The one that I'm using is this one right here, which is Dior's Dior Show Blackout. Um, it's not a waterproof mascara. I tend to steer clear of those because I find them really difficult to remove. Actually, this one right here is actually really difficult to remove on its own and, and it's not waterproof at all. 
um, I have to apply a lot of makeup remover to remove it um, and it's really time consuming but um, I still really really am a fan of this mascara because oh it really makes my eye eyelashes pop like no other mascara I mean I've tried drugstore want brands I've tried other brands but so far I really 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 like this mascara um, if anyone has any ideas about a great makeup remover, please let me know down below in the comments because I'm really eager to hear. Okay, so just take your mascara wand out of your mascara. For me, I know this is probably really, really bad, but I like to scrape it against the side of my bottle. Um, maybe some might think it would damage the brush, but for me, I mean the wand, but for me it hasn't damaged it. Um, I just don't like to I don't like the idea of wasting a really expensive mascara on a tissue so I like to um, just keep doing this until my brush is um, not clumpy maybe if like they made an actual mascara that kind of like you know like little wipers as you pull it out maybe it would kind of be better so that you wouldn't waste it. I mean, like, this is a really expensive mascara, so I just don't like the idea of wasting it. Okay, so if you didn't curl your lashes just like I didn't, you didn't think you needed it, maybe, um, just, if you want to give it that little bit of curl, just make sure that when you apply your mascara to start at the very, very tip, um, at the end of the base of your, um, lashes, and you just squiggle, um, your brush just to give it a little bit of curl and also to empty the product onto your, um, lashes, but... Also, if you just like that, it would help. It helps the eyelashes to curl just that little bit more. Also, the only other downside to this mascara, um, other than being difficult to take off, is also that the brush is really big. So you have to be really careful when applying it because you don't want it to go and ruin your makeup that you've already applied. Okay, so I finished applying the mascara and at this stage now you can actually apply a bronzer or a blush um, but you don't have to do either of those things. Um, in this case I'm going to apply blush, no bronzer. Um, the one that I'm using is this one right here which is CoverGirl's um, Cheekers. The color is Rose Silk and it's number 105. Again, I'm going to use the Kabuki brush to apply it rather than the little brush that it comes with, which is this one. Um, I just feel that this one, the Kabuki brush will give a, a better finish. Um, it will blend a bit better into my face. So start by just mixing your Kabuki brush around on the palette of blush and just blend it in a circular motion on your upper cheek. upper cheekbone just going up like that and without re-dipping into the blush palette just um, whatever you have left on your Kabuki brush just go into your t-zone and chin. Okay so now to finish the look I'm going to apply a nude lipstick um, the one that I'm going to use is this one right here which is Dior's um, oh, what is it Rouge Dior Nude um, and the color is in Greg 169, um, which is the color that um, was in most of the advertisements when this was first released that Natalie Portman was wearing. I got this lipstick because I felt that it, gi it gives me the most natural looking lip. As you can see, it's almost finished. I'm almost done. Um, it's my favorite lipstick right now. Um, I'm using it pretty much every day. So I'll just apply it straight from the barrel. Um, it's the easiest way to do it. And there you go. Okay, so this is my finished natural look. As you can see, it's really fresh and natural looking and it's really something that you can wear every day. Okay, so if you don't have a lip blush to complete this natural look, um, check out my video just there somewhere <laughs> and um, it will show you how to create your own nude lip blush using a red lipstick. If you like this video, please give it a like or a thumbs up. Um, and please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see my upcoming videos. Okay, see ya. Have a nice day.